In this video, we're going to talk about surface gravity waves. And these are the waves you see on the surface of a pond, or the surface of a lake, or the ocean, or even your bathtub. So um, these are the ripples, or the crests and troughs you see um, at the interface between the air and the water. So they're at the surface. So that's why we call them uh, surface. And the gravity comes from because the restoring force for these waves is gravity. So if this, the sea surface height is pulled up from its equilibrium position, then gravity will pull it down. And as it accelerates downwards, it will reach the position of the equilibrium with a non-zero speed. And so it'll overshoot and go down and then back up and down and up. And in the process, uh, you form waves. And these waves actually propagate and they radiate around in the ocean. So before we get into the physics of the surface gravity wave, I'm going to define some terminology for the ways in which we describe a wave mathematically. And so I brought up some notes this time to make sure I don't forget any of the definitions I want to introduce uh, in this uh, short video. All right, so we're going to think about uh, surface gravity waves with a coordinate uh, z pointing upwards. So gravity is pointing downwards. So z is pointing upwards. And the position z equals 0, that is going to be the sea surface of the ocean if it was at rest. So and this direction here will be the x-axis. So if we want to describe a simple uh, wave mathematically, we could use, for example, a sinusoidal wave, a sine wave. And so I'm going to describe it uh, something like this. And so on. And the, this position here, this, corresponds to z is equal to h of x and t where t is time and x is the position along this axis. And the particular form we're going to use is uh, h is equal to a sine of 2 pi over lambda x minus ct. All right, so there's quite a few terms in here. And so I'm going to try to define all of these in term. In term. So first of all, the sine function reaches its maximum at pi by 2 and it has a maximum of 1. And so the, at the crest here, where sine is its maximum, the wave height will be a. So this distance here, a, is the amplitude. So a is called the wave amplitude, wave amplitude. And so if we want to the, the height from crest to trough, that would be twice the amplitude, all right? So it's 2a would be the crest to trough uh, height. All right, uh, inside the sine argument, we have something that we call the phase, phi, and it's just 2 pi over lambda x minus ct. And sometimes we also rewrite it uh, just like this, kx minus ct or kx minus omega t. And that's the phase of the wave. All right, so now there's lots of things to define within there. Um, I guess we'll start with lambda, distance from one of a one full wave. So lambda is the wavelength. 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 Right, so one full wave sine will go from zero to two pi, and that will happen over a distance lambda. So lambda here has to have units of length because you have x, which is units of length. And so the argument of sine has to be dimensionless. So x over lambda has to be dimensionless. OK, lambda is the wavelength. Um, or we can also rewrite it as just k, which is equal to 2 pi over lambda. And that's known as the wave number. So that's the wave number. number. And you could think of it as the number of waves per 2 pi. So number of waves, number of waves. Interval two pi two pi radians. Um, C. Oh, another quantity, I guess. Uh, T. Oh, I didn't have T. So let me introduce T. Um, well, I guess I'll introduce the speed first. C is the wave, the speed of the wave, which is lambda over the period T. So T is the period. Period. And C is the phase speed, the phase 
or wave. Either one it can be used. Speed. So it's got units of meters per second, for example. T is the period, and that has units of seconds, meters per second. K has units of inverse length, one over meters. Lambda, meters. The phase dimension less, because it's the argument of the sine function. Um, I'm running out of space here. I didn't plan very well. Nu, which is one over T, is the frequency of the wave. That's just the frequency. And it's uh, expressed in uh, cycles per second, or sometimes in hertz. Uh, we also define uh, omega, which I have over here, omega, which is 2 pi nu, which is the angular frequency, angular frequency. I think that's everything I wanted to define. All right, so amplitude, phase, the argument of the sine, lambda, the wavelength, k, the wave number. These are reciprocals except for the factor of 2 pi. C, the phase speed, the wavelength over uh, the period. But it can also be written in other ways. It's also equal to um, omega over k. Okay, phase. Right? If I divide, um, if I pull out uh, k from here, and I get c, which should just be omega over k, which is also the wave, wave speed. And t is the period. Nu, the reciprocal of the period, is the frequency. So the period is uh, the amount of time it takes to go through one full cycle of the wave. And uh, I guess and omega is the angular frequency. It's just 2 pi times the regular frequency. All right, so let me make a little picture to try to simplify these or have these um, definitions kind of make sense in your mind. I'm going to erase all this. All right, to help you put all these definitions uh, in order in your mind, I'm going to make a picture of crests and troughs uh, in, the, in the plane with x direction now pointing upwards and time pointing in the um, pointing to the right up here. This is distance in the x direction, and this will be time, time, t. And if I mark off a distance of one period out here, from here to here, this is t. So time is equal to one period. And if I mark off a distance of one wavelength, x is equal to lambda over here. And if I join these points out here, then this line over here We'll have a slope, delta x, delta t, will be equal to lambda over t, and that's just the phase speed c. And so if this was a line with a node, then this would be a constant phase line, which would be a node along here. But the, and midway between that, we have another nodal line out here. And then down here, um, let me make my picture symmetric. Another nodal line. And then halfway between this, we'd have a crest. So out here, we have a line of constant phase, which is a crest. C. Crest. Crest. And then midway between here and the next nodal line, we'd have a trough. This is a nodal line, and then a trough, and then a node, and then a crest, so on. So if you were to stand, stand at this point, uh, stand still, then time would be going by, and you'd see, you'd be at the node, you'd see a trough, and back up to a node, up to a crest, and back down to a node again. So you'd see if you stand still, you'd be moving along this direction, and you'd be seeing crests and troughs go past. Um, oscillate as the water moves up and down for this wave. Or if you were to stand still and describe what happens to the crests and troughs in this direction, at fixed time, what you would see would be node, crest, node, trough, and then node again. Right, so you'd go up, down to the trough, and back up. All right, so this is uh, the picture of uh, the wave. Remember, right, the 
the sea surface is moving up and down uh, in the direction perpendicular to the x-axis here, because this direction is time on my picture.